Okay, we're going to look at a problem in which we have to find the electric field caused by two point particles. Um, and here's our problem. A charge Q1, uh, which is plus 8 microcoulombs, is at the origin, and a charge Q2 is minus 6.00 microcoulombs. It's on the x-axis 0.40 meters from the origin. Find the electric field strength at point P, which is on the y-axis 0.40 meters from the origin. So what I've done is I've kind of sketched out a pretty crude coordinate plane here, uh, and I've put Q1 at uh, its location and Q2 at its location. Each tick mark here is going to represent uh, 0.10 meters. Uh, we have our givens. I've listed out Q1 and the location of Q1, Q2, and the location of Q2, uh, and the location of P. What we're actually trying to find our unknown, I'm going to keep this in red, is the electric field uh, at point P. So let's use, uh, let's use blue to represent the electric field. Before we do anything else, we can see that because Q1 is a positive charge, at point P, the electric field is going to be pointing up, at least the electric field caused by uh, caused by Q1. So I'm going to label that E1. And the electric field caused by Q2 is going to be towards Q2, so there's going to be um, there's going to be an E2 pointed down at an angle here. So in order to solve this problem, we're going to have to figure out each of these individual electric fields and then do the vector addition to find the resultant electric field. Um, so this is a, a multi-part problem. And let's actually, uh, let's just get started by finding the electric field caused by uh, Q1. So that's going to be, that's going to be E1. I'm zooming in a little bit. So I'm going to come down here. The electric field caused by one point charge is equal to K uh, Q over R squared. In this case, it's going to be Q1. Um, so it's going to be 9 uh, times 10 to the 9 newton meters squared per coulomb squared times the charge of Q1, which as we see is 8.00 microcoulombs, so times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, divided by uh, R squared, where R is the distance from uh, Q1 to the point. We can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4 tick marks. That's going to be a distance of 0 0.40 meters, 0 0.40 meters, all squared. And so we're going to get an electric field um, that is equal to, let's calculate it, 9 times 10 to the 9 times 8 times 10 to the minus 6. We're going to get 450 um, times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. And as we can see from the diagram, the direction of that is straight up. So since this is two-dimensional, I'm going to say at an angle of 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees from the positive x-axis. We're going to use uh, standard math notation there. So that's our first part. Uh, it gets a little bit more complicated when we uh, need to find the electric field caused by Q2 because we do not have a distance given uh, for Q2. We know that E2 is going to be equal to KQ2 over R squared, R2 squared really. Um, but that distance, R2, is actually going to be the distance, that green distance there. That's R2. So we're going to have to do a little bit of geometry to figure out R2. Um, uh, but it's pretty straightforward geometry, just Pythagorean theorem. We know that the distance from the origin to, uh, to Q2 is 0 0.40 meters. We also know the distance from the origin to P is 0 0.40 meters. That's P. So the distance from Q2 to P is going to be uh, 0 0.40 meters root 2. 0 0.40 meters times root 2 just from 
the Pythagorean theorem. And that's equal to 0 0.40 times root 2. Uh, that's going to be 0.57 or 0.565 meters. That's our R2. So let's go back and actually calculate this now. We have all of our values. 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per coulomb squared times the charge on Q2, which is negative 6 minus 6 6.00 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs divided by our distance, 0.565 meters all squared. And that's going to give us an electric field uh, at point uh, P caused by 2 of 9 times 10 to the 9 times minus 6 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, divided by 0.565 squared. It's an electric field of our answer is negative 169, but we know that negative sign just indicates a direction. So I'm going to uh, write it down as 169 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. And we know that it's uh, kind of angled down towards Q2. So it's actually at an angle of, uh, we could say, negative 45 degrees, negative 45 degrees. And we can figure out that out just by looking at our right triangle again. Um, if we look at the angle of this electric field vector below the x-axis, it's going to be 45 degrees there. So we have our two electric field vectors. Now we just need to find the uh, resultant vector. We're going to use vector addition for this. Uh, we have, I'm going to do the vector addition down here, E total is equal to E1 plus E2. They are vectors, vectors, vectors. And E1 is pointed straight up. It has a magnitude of 450 times 10 to the 3. E, uh, E2 is pointed at an angle down like this. It has a magnitude of 169 times 10 to the 3. So our resultant vector is going to be something like that. That's our E total. In order to figure this out, we're actually going to need to break this vector back into components again, E2. So, uh, so let's do that. Uh, E1, x equals 0, E1 y equals 450 times 10 to the 3 per coulomb. And um, for our E2, since we're down at an angle of 45 degrees, this is a special right triangle, 45, 45, 45, E2x, E2y. Um, this is 169, so this is going to be 169 over root 2, divided by root 2, which gives us negative, or 120, magnitude of 120. This is also going to have a magnitude of 120. And notice I'm emitting the 10 to the 3 and the units, but that's just to speed things along. Um, but there's our x and y components. E2x is in the positive direction, and it's 120 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. E2y is in the negative direction. It's going straight down. And it's going to be 120. That's negative 120 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. So now we are almost done. We need to add these vectors to find the resultant. Um, if we look at our total x component, E total x, total x, it's just going to be the sum of our individual x components. E1x is 0, E2x is 120. So 
So that's 120 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. And our total y component is just the sum of our two y components. We have an upward y component of 450 and a downward y component. Downward y component here of uh, 120. So 450 minus 120 is going to give us 330. 330 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. And that's a negative number. Uh, let's see what is next. Then we are almost done. We just need to do the vector addition. Uh, we have a downward vector. I'm actually going to come all the way back over here. We have a downward vector of 330 newtons per coulomb. 330. And a rightward vector of 120. 120. So our resultant vector, which I'm going to do in uh, green, is going to be our E total. And if we do the Pythagorean theorem, we get 330 uh, squared plus 120 squared. Take the square root of that. We get 351 newtons per coulomb. That gives us the magnitude. And we also need the direction. So we can pick an angle to use for direction. I'm going to pick that little angle there. That's going to be my theta. It's not a very good looking theta, but it is a theta. Um, and to find theta, theta is going to be the inverse tan, or the arc tan, of 120 over 330. And we get an angle of uh, 19.98 degrees, which is going to be 20.0 degrees to 3 sig figs. Uh, and I just realized I've made a mistake up here with my total electric field. I forgot my factor of 10 to the 3, so I'm going to add that back in, times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. Our final answer is then um, let's just write it out clearly. The electric field at P is 351 newtons per coulomb at an angle of um, 20.0 degrees and that's going to be uh, counterclockwise from the negative y-axis. That's all she wrote.